Boker Tov, Chavri, I'm Stephen Benoon. You're watching Israeli News Live here on January the 30th, 2017. And starting off in our news today, we have a Russian insider breaking a remarkable story, something I have said from the very beginning, from the very outset, but had no idea that this had been placed in writing. Uh, this here, the title of the article, Oops, Genius Ukrainian Top Prosecutor Accidentally Proves Russia Did Not Invade Ukraine. What would you know about that? <clears throat> Excuse me, a coup regime uh, flunky and legal clown, Yuri uh, Lysenko, set out to try to prove the former Ukrainian president uh, president's treason, but ended up proving the exact opposite. What actually happens in this story right here is that this uh, prosecutor who had actually been uh, put in prison, no one really knows if the charges were genuine or not genuine, at, this, uh, at the outset of this because of the uh, changing in um, uh, power, who's actually in power now. But anyway, this man right here, uh, Yuri Lysenko, who is now the prosecutor general, instead of trying to put all the bad guys in prison, has been on a uh, mission to try to find a way to charge former president, uh, uh, excuse me, uh, Yanukovych, Viktor Yanukovych, uh, for treason. In so doing, he thought he found the smoking gun, as you might call it, and uh, his smoking gun is this letter right here that supposedly, and we have to say it's alleged at this point here, we have no way to prove it, but even if it is a legitimate letter, it is even more compelling uh, than anything else. But this letter here, uh, President, uh, former President Yanukovych actually is calling upon President Putin to intervene into his country. He states in the letter that the country is on the verge of civil war and that he needs Russia and their military to enter into the country to help stabilize the situation. The letter states he asked the President Putin to enter into Crimea where it is most volatile for the people that are living there and as well as in Donbass. There are some though officials, uh, according to the Russian insider, to say that the letter indicates more so not just for the eastern part of Ukraine, but all of Ukraine. So again, <clears throat> as it was stated by John Kerry about Russia and regarding to Syria, he says Russia has a right to be there because they were invited there. This letter was issued while Viktor Yanukovych was still president, acting president of Ukraine, and it shows that Russia was invited to help stabilize the country from a, from a civil war, a possible civil war, which it ended up being exactly that way. That would exonerate Russia completely and would give Russia the right to still be inside of Ukraine from what we can gather. Of course, not being a lawyer myself on this or international lawyer of any kind, but uh, it seems that it would give them perfect right to be there, even according to John Kerry's words where he spoke about Russia's right to be inside of Syria on the leaked audio files that was, uh, that was set out about Russia inside Syria because they were invited. Uh, that is a very powerful, powerful message there. And on top of it, uh, Lorenzo on Already Happened is sharing with us more photos, more military, U.S. military now in Germany. Uh, just, you know, do they really need more? He puts in the question marks here. Just keep pouring into the country there. There's just no stop in the number of troops and armored vehicles and tanks and personnel carriers and everything else that keep flooding into Europe. You can't help but wonder what's it all about. And uh, moving into other news as well, now terrorist attack on, on Muslims, at least six killed in Quebec City mosque shooting. This happened, uh, um, I don't know if it happened this morning, or actually I guess it was, maybe it must have been last night. Uh, but according to the uh, RT, it says at least six people are dead after gunmen opened fire in a mosque in Quebec City on Sunday. A policeman, excuse me, a police spokeswoman said as, as a city by, cited by Reuters, Canadian Prime Minister Justin Trudeau called the shooting a terrorist attack on Muslims. The attack took place at the Center of Cultural Islamic uh, de Quebec. <clears throat> and uh, by the way, this is not the first time that this particular mosque has come under uh, an attack, not, not by shooting, but they have been uh, 
very much uh, come under, under fire by other groups and stuff. Now, keeping this in mind, we know that President Donald Trump has passed the, uh, this, this ban on uh, different uh, nationalities from seven different countries from entering the United States. And see, this is not just a ban on refugees. The other day I mentioned about the refugees in FEMA camps, and of course some of our listeners misunderstood my point on the FEMA camps. I realize FEMA camps especially in conspiracy theories, which I happen to agree with the theories there that they, grow, that they may be used in the near future for Americans under a severe uh, martial law scenario, civil unrest, whatever the case may be, that they would be used for that. My point is, is that uh, before Donald Trump goes to ban these refugees that have been become refugees in many cases, especially in Syria, due to the uh, evil acts of the Obama administration and what he has caused over there by all this civil unrest, arming jihadists to cause these people to have to flee their country, my thought would be to take something that was meant for evil, such as the FEMA camps, and use it for a better purpose because a lot of the refugees are in such a bad situation inside of Syria that we could at least bring in some of these families with children and things of this nature here, open up these camps and have a little bit better ability to accommodate uh, the people that are refugees and to give the government a, a more adequate time to be able to evaluate whether or not their stay in America is safe or not. Uh, it would be a much better controlled environment in that regards there. So I'm not for FEMA camps to begin with. It's not my intention to say that, but trying to deal with the situation from what uh, has been created here by President Trump. I, I Again, I understand to some degree why he first started this, especially when it comes to refugees, because of the situation that has happened inside of Europe. We have seen it firsthand for ourselves. I've been there. I've been to uh, over in France to Calais. I've been there to where the jungle is. Uh, we, we have been in, in Paris where the refugees are there. In Germany, all the different places, we've seen it firsthand just how chaotic it can be, especially when it's just open the door policy and let everybody in. You never know what you're going to get. We've had rape increases. We've had all kinds of crime increases. So in that regard there, I understand Donald Trump's policy on refugees. But the ban goes beyond refugees, and this is where it really gets kind of crazy. Uh, we're talking about people that have been working in America as citizens, not as citizens, but as uh, on visas that have gotten degrees in America and everything else. All of these people being affected by this ban, and this is what is causing a lot of protests, widespread uh, protests, and it's growing day by day. And of course, we know George Soros, no doubt, funding some of these protests from some of the things that I've been seeing as well. Uh, but people are concerned that this is going to cause a revolution inside of America if something doesn't change quickly. President Trump is clearly making some very radical changes. Some of the changes I realize are good, but then again, some of them I cannot help but wonder, is this done intentionally? And I know some people are not going to like that, but you have to remember, I sat down in a meeting in Washington, D.C. with an insider on the Obama administration, and they had been looking for years to find a way to create civil unrest, to bring about martial law, to bring the country down. Now, I believe that Donald Trump, I want to believe that he's there for trying to bring the economy back, help the country out, but some of the radical changes that are going on just concerns me as what's it really for? You know, refugees, like I said, I understand the refugee situation, but the band is affecting far more than just refugees. And I understand the screening process to make sure, because Obama no doubt let anybody and everybody in the country. Um, but, you know, we're not faced with a lot of terrorism inside the United States right now. So did it have to be this radical is my questioning on that. And also offering an alternative way to be able to deal with the situation with refugees, uh, especially since the Obama administration had already created such a major catastrophe uh, inside of Syria. We owe it to some of these Syrian families uh, for what the Obama administration has done. Uh, but anyway, so that was just a thought to, to, to try to take a bad situation and make it better. Uh, one other thing in the news broadcast I wanna share with you 
And this is something, especially for those that are more mindful of FEMA camps and what they were, what the intention of the government was, especially under the Obama and Bush administration there for possible civil unrest. They don't say that, no doubt, but uh, that's the conspiracy theory that is out there, that they would use these as more like concentration camps during uh, Europe's time of the uh, killing off of the Jews uh, under, under uh, Nazi Germany and throughout different parts of Europe. But as well, I had a friend of mine, very much an insider on what is going on in the world, what the New World Order plans are. These camps have also been set up inside of Canada. And by the way, what's going to shock you is why. The insider that I have that I cannot divulge the, the source's information has told me first-handedly that they are going to be using camps inside of Canada for those that are fleeing the United States going to Canada. You're not going to be going to Canada and getting a free ride and think Can Canadians are going to care for you. The Canadian government is very much ready for the Christian type people that will flee this type of persecution and they will be putting them in camps and there as well. And I've got good friends that are up on the border of Canada now that live there in the event that civil unrest were to happen in the nation, if the nation ever went into civil war, that that was a plan of theirs as well, is to flee into Canada. Well, Canada is ready for just exactly that situation, and they have built camps, just like the FEMA camps in America, they built camps in Canada to be able to imprison fleeing Americans from the, the, from the South, so to speak very serious times that we're living in friends i don't know what's going to happen next i really just do not we're scouring uh, biblical uh, texts to see if we can find out make heads or tails of what is coming up uh, as much as i believe and would like to see that this is going to be a good thing the lifting of sanctions on russia the working together with russia to avert war and things of this nature here you just cannot help but wonder so many radical changes happening. We, you know, and like I said, some of them are for the better. I realize that I'm for um, the life of an unborn child. I've, I'm for that very much. I think that even a mother should take that into consideration, not just exercise, as they call it, the right of women just to take a life away. Uh, I know if the child was born and you took the child's life after it's born, you'd be put in prison uh, for murder. So you have to think of these type things here. So there are some good things that Trump is doing as well. And uh, I'm afraid things like what has happened now on the uh, putting a temporary, and it is a temporary, and I wanna make sure we stress that as well. Donald Trump said this is a temporary ban until they can get a control of how to, uh, I guess in their words would be to process or how to evaluate uh, the people that are coming into the country. So I understand that. And I realize he's trying to do it for security purpose, and I realize he means it for good. At least that's what I want to hope he means it for. But keep in mind, President Trump is surrounded by some very, very well known New World Order advocates. And that's something that we have to be mindful of as well. As well as President Trump may mean well himself, he is surrounded in his administration with very well-known New World Order advocates. And that's a concern to me. And like I said to you, and I revealed to you before, even though I took a stand for Putin when everybody was against him, I also revealed to you that he has aligned himself as well with Henry Kissinger, who is the architect of the New World Order. And so is President Trump. I'm Stephen Benoon. You're watching Israeli News Live. Shalom.